Welcome. This is going to be a pre-recorded lecture this time, so when you're watching this, I'll be watching it with you from home. I want to welcome you all today. The first thing I want to talk about is the physician oath. Now, we want to remember today, we're going to talk about making sure we keep in mind that we do no harm. That's part of the Hippocratic Oath we want to remember. This is the last man standing. This is going to be my last final solo lecture. I'll be doing round table with the guys, but today, enjoy the last show that I'm going to do on my own. <clears throat> Please stay connected with us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, etc. Many platforms are available. Even older folks are getting to learn how to use this stuff. It's wise today because Staying home might be safer than going out, so you can reach us a lot of different ways. We have patients from every corner of the earth. It's very easy to have virtual appointments, Dr. Jeff, Dr. Craig, and myself. And remember, we have three separate type practices. We're all kind of different. You can get a second opinion from this office if you schedule a new patient with somebody else. It's easy to do, and you might have something that's uncovered that one of us didn't spot. Don't worry, we all work together. We're in, out here for your best interest. Supplements can be shipped anywhere. It's amazing what's happening today. It's very easy to get to us. We can send anything anywhere. Quest came at us and asked if they could set up a lab in our office. We do not get paid by Quest. It's perfectly legal. There's no kickbacks. All the money that Quest charges goes to them. We just provided the space. You can have stuff run. They will bill your insurance. This is the hours that they're here. It's been great for the patients because basically a lot of people in this last three or four years got really burned out in the medical community and having to fight off their medical doctor for questions they don't want to answer or procedures they don't want to have done to themselves. Many people have used us because they're sick of the other approach. They wore themselves out in the last five years and no one wants to go back. <clears throat> Dr. Gill brought this lady into the office. She made a comment to me. We have cardiac screenings every third Wednesday. She said something that I think is extremely significant. She made a comment to me, and I thought, you know, I don't want to really let this go, so I want to make sure you hear what she said to me. Cindy, who's helped check all our heart patients, and she works in hospitals and cardiology practice. She works all over the medical industry. She said, made a comment to me after checking my worst patients that I brought in for her. This is what she said. What I told Dr. Tent, really out of surprise, was how healthy all of the sick patients here are. They come, people come in for testing, and they tell me they have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and other cardiac diagnosis and they're they always seem perfectly healthy and I see their exams I see what problems they've had but it doesn't show up in their day-to-day -day, the way they practice their lives and it certainly doesn't look as bad on the screen as I was expecting it to look so yes very healthy patient and I brought her the worst of the worst folks this is what nutrition can really do She's watching. They do not want you to know about this. Thanks, Cindy. <clears throat> she does all the hospitals and doctor's offices. And she casually said to me one day, you have the healthiest sick people I've ever seen. There might be a reason why. Maybe you can figure some of that stuff out. <clears throat> now, if you're going through your parents' stuff, the last thing you want to see is a book, Is My Child Stupid? Some guy was cleaning out. This was on Twitter, by the way. And I found this and I thought, you know, when I was growing up, I graduated in 1975 from high school. We kind of had kids that were, now you can't say stupid today because nobody's stupid today. They have a disease. They have ADD, they have ADHD, they have all kinds of Ds. There's Ds that go on that I've not even learned yet. But when I was growing up, it was okay to kind of be not the brightest kid in the class, but everybody gets a sticker now because Everybody's a genius. Now, I, to have to go back here, officially linked to brain defects. 
officially linked, fluoride and lead officially linked. Now, I have to talk about this every day and I'm tired of it because many people still, you can see them driving, they're dull. <clears throat> now for you folks that are a little more savvy, learning to run interference for the halogens, I consider this Iodoro is what many people are doing. This might be a little superior for you folks with some sluggish thyroids. I take this, I've had incredible energy in the morning with a thyroid panel that was perfectly normal. To get stuff that's not in my diet, this was an easy source for people that are used to taking iodine. Give it a try, it's just for the people that have been around for a while. I have to, I have to tell my dentist, look up the Harvard study, look up the Harvard fluoride study. It's popular, it's everywhere. We cannot continue to dumb down our children. Well, every day you have to hear about dementia. Every day we're losing another generation of people because the medications that they're on contribute to this. And this is a kind of a mess that we're all in the middle of right now, but it's kind of interesting how these things match up. The staff said to me they had no clue how many medications are causing dementia. This is most... Many of my patients, this is part of their life. This is it. Antidepressants, anti-sleeping pills, statins are right in the middle. Every person losing his mind is on a statin. It becomes necessary to take people on a statin because it just makes them diabetic and demented and they think that's the best way to go. And if somebody else pays for it, they're in. <clears throat> now, I lost my auto show connection. I used to see a gal by the name of Janina she was in charge of the auto show. <clears throat> she thought she might go to Germany one day, so two shots later, I went to visit her at 14 Mile and Decker. I walked up to her in the nursing home. I said, Janina, how you doing? And she looked right at me and said, who are you? Now to look at somebody that I worked with for 20 years, and she was, looked exactly like I remember her, talk about getting pushed off the ledge quickly. I miss you, Janina. That was a, we had a great time together at the auto show. Now, there's a big thing coming up in Pleasant, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I did this because my good buddy, Dr. Richard Olry, is going to be talking. Judy Mikovits has stuff to say. Brian Artis has stuff to say. You might see me there, you might not. But those people are going to rip the bandage off, buckle up, because these people know what they're doing, and I support all of them. To get this guy in the hot seat and to have him say, it just sort of appeared. What do you mean it sort of appeared? Well, we just kind of made it up. Made what up? Remember the dots and the Myers? Remember the dots we had to stand in? I wasn't a real good dot person. I'm not a good arrow person. In fact, I probably went the wrong way. I probably didn't stand on the dot properly. I probably got a lot of dirty looks for standing there with my arms crossed, not wearing a mask, but you know what? I don't care. I did it. The state came in here to hassle us. Guess what? Didn't care much about that either. Just kind of showed them to the door and waited for the letter that said you're perfectly fine. And I got the letter. It was on the door. Have some guts. We're going to talk about guts a little bit in this lecture. Some of you folks are going to have to watch this because I watched a generation lose their guts. And let me tell you, the people coming across the border, they got more guts than your entire subdivision. Hmm. Every day, I have to hear about somebody whose relative died of a cancer out of nowhere. Well, elephants don't get cancer, rarely, because they have an extra cancer-fighting gene. Now, pay attention. This is all over the literature today. It's called P53. What's it called? P53. It's important to remember that. The COVID-19 boosters found to impair your T cells. You know what that means? Turbo cancer. There's your tur Your body was fighting cancer so well, God gave us an incredible system. I had no clue how well these people were fighting cancer until they shut off the P53 gene. People are getting cancers how long? Three months? Six months? I've seen pancreas cancer. I've seen brain cancer. I've seen lung cancer. I've seen every Dawn's in last week crying. That's what's the matter. She said, my 27-year-old niece has 
stage four lymphoma. My first question always is, where does she work? She's a respiratory therapist. She's a physical therapist. What they've done to the hospital people and the people in health is a crime. Every day I'm hearing somebody's relative dying of some weird sudden thing, and nobody seems to question or care. We're, we're worried about the Red Wings and the sports and crazy things. They're whacking us left and right, and it's a daily thing now. <clears throat> it's time to take this seriously because the people that are coming across the border aren't as weak as us. Brain cancers in the young, ask the oncologist what's happening. It's embarrassing what we've done to ourselves. And it's all over the internet. This is not anything new. Now, I'm not going to belabor the point, but it's a mess right now. There are only a handful out of the 100,000 doctors, Canadian doctors, that didn't take the vaccine uh, that are still practicing medicine. So it's, it's something like 99.9% .9 vaccination rate. And they were the first ones to line up for their vaccines. Well, as I started looking at the sudden deaths of Canadian doctors, I realized, yes, most of them are dying from cardiac issues, heart injuries, cardiac arrests, uh, you know, dying while jogging or swimming, dying mm -hmm. in their sleep. And Dr. Peter McCullough has talked about this extensively about the myocarditis and the damage to the heart, the scarring to the heart. And then some were di dying from blood clots, pulmonary emboli, strokes. But then there was a quite a large subset of doctors who were developing extremely aggressive cancers. And cancers at an age that they shouldn't be getting. So, for example, there was a doctor who developed gastric cancer in his 30s, presented at stage four. He was dead in less than a year. Very rare brain cancers in young individuals in their 20s and 30s, medical students, medical residents. And these cancers would always present at stage four, and they would always kill them in a matter of a few months. And it was always less than a year. And, you know, at first I didn't know, you know, what the term for this was or what the phenomenon was. I just started, you know, really paying attention to it, tracking it. I then, you know, realized that this is being called turbo cancer by people on social media. A turbo cancer is not a medical term, but it's a term that people came up with to really describe the extremely aggressive nature of these cancers in the COVID vaccinated. And these cancers behave completely differently, unlike anything I've seen before in my career, and I've diagnosed uh, over 20,000 cancer patients in my career with cutting itch, PET CT, positron emission tomography imaging, CT, MRI, pathological correlation. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen stage four breast cancers presenting in women in their 20s. I've never seen stage four colon cancers presenting in men and women in their, you know, 20s, 30s. Uh, leukemias that will kill you in a matter of days or even hours after diagnosis. Um, lymphomas that, again, kill you in a matter of months. I'm surrounded with this every single day. We are at war, folks. And you're not going to believe all the people that participate in this. You will when I'm done. This is this, He's an oncologist. Think he has some credentials? I think he has credentials. Here's polio. My dad had polio. What does it say about polio? Sore throat, fever, vomiting, nausea, cramping, constipation, diarrhea. It looks like the flu unless you're sickly. I said to my father, you must have been a sickly kid because it just looks like the flu on the average patient. It's always looked like the flu, but that was another hoax. All these things are what's in our water today because we drink out of the Detroit River. Sewage is causing a major problem. It's all over your lettuce. You better learn to have a healthy constitution. I want you to look at the people cooking your food in the restaurants. Buckle up. It's a nightmare. Turbo cancer. Now, I want to make a comment about this. You want to might call the office and ask for our missionary protocol because you better be on your toes if you're eating out because I'm all over this kind of stuff because I got a little routine I eat here. If I'm out of my element, I'll keep an eye on where I'm eating. I can't believe the turbo cancers I've seen. Watch the guy at hockey die in about three months. John, Miss John, what a, what a great guy. Now they claim that there's viral levels in our wastewater. Where do you think you're pooping out the shots? In your wastewater. You got a circle going that you can't get out of right now. To give you the shot, you poop it out. You pick up the stuff, you give you another shot. It's a wheel. <laughs> You're never going to get out of it. And they don't want you out of it. 
Vaccine exemptions. Thank God Michigan still is in blue. We have a very strong state. I wonder why we have such a strong state. But I'm proud to have helped this state stay blue in that term, not the other term. <laughs> California, New York, these states are gone. Get out of them to save your children. They're trying to take everybody out. Flee the yellow states. We have to get rid of this to come to this country. The, the people, I have many husbands and wives of patients trying to get in this country. And to have these men distraught, to have their wife or husband poisoned to come into the country. This is ridiculous. We have to stop the vaccinations because these people are sick by the time they get to my door. I remember one Albanian lady had 14 vaccinations. You talk about sick. These people are crying in my office because we have to kill them. But if you come across the border with an AK-47, you're going to get a $10,000 check. This is a messed up system. You're going to hear a little bit more about that, so stay tuned. Let me ask you a question. If the enemy was in our gate, could you tell? Could you? Let's take a look. Military. Who do you think can survive that? Do you think any human being can survive that? Nobody can survive that. You watch what they've done to the nurses, the military people. The, watch with the missionary. The missionaries come in, these kind little people, they are messed up. This is a crime scene. Nobody needs any of this stuff. It's all a complete waste of time. Kids. My kids have never been to a pediatrician, and my son's dating a gal that starts medical school in about six weeks. So he laid down the law. Number one, I've never had a shot. Number two, you're not getting a shot. And number three, if we have a kid, he's not getting a shot. So you better buckle up because that's a deal breaker for me. And that's my son. He's not raised around this. He looked at me as he was growing up and said, Dad, my friends are all messed up. And you know what I said to him? You're welcome. If the enemy was at the gate, how would you know? U.S. government to purchase Japanese seafood for the military despite Fukushima radiation concerns. They bought up all the radioactive seafood. They sent it to three places. What are the three places they sent it to? I gave you one. Where's the other places? Prisons and schools. Military prisons, and don't forget the hospitals, because hospitals are going to get some of this too. That's where they serve the most awful food goes to our children, our military, and the hospitals. Our system's been broken for a long time. A lot of you are just starting to figure it out now. We took a short vacation to fly to a hot spot. Just before I was ready to schedule this, this comes across the internet. FAA hiring workers with severe intellectual disabilities. And I'm like, this is not the time to read this. <laughs> Flying right now is turning into an adventure, as you all have seen. But remember, something's happening in this country. I'm going to touch on it in a little bit. Just stay tuned. You know, food. I'm at the food part. You know, watching the food game go on. For example, I'm in the locker room putting my skates on, and the men start talking about statins. So a couple of guys said, you know, there's an internist on the team, and they start, you take statins? Yeah, I take statins. You take, everybody's talking about their statins. And they looked at the internist and said, you take statins? He said, yeah, I take statins. He said, and I do the ketogenic diet. Now, since everybody's intimidated by these people, I've never been because I understood what their game was. I stood up and said, wait a minute, that's ridiculous. I said, one or the other, you can't do both. He laughed and, <laughs> yeah, that is kind of dumb. He don't believe what he does. I just, he doesn't, yeah, he's doing both. Well, you got your bases covered. <clears throat> you ready? Now, this is a big part of my lecture. Now, look, I've been in practice 42 years. I've played hockey for 35 years, three times a week, in a men's draft league. Not a little weenie league, we got drafted. 
I've been here 42 years. I've had three sick days. I never missed a day because of hockey, and I've, had, I've been racked pretty hard, and I was in here the next day. Now, in my life, I know what makes me work. I understand this. Now, I had to listen to the government, all the nurses. Do you know how many health seminars I had to sit into that these people that never treated a patient talked about how to eat? Churches, they really think they got it figured out, and they talked about all you need and what you got to eat. So to hear all I got to do is fruits and vegetables and fruits and vegetables. I've heard a lot about fruits and vegetables. <clears throat> People at every single seminar that I've been to, all the doctors, all the cardiologists, all the nurses, all the health people, said it backwards and wrong. There's a handful of doctors. Dr. Atkins tried to tell you. Dr. Dobbins tried to tell you. Dr. Versendahl tried to tell you. Dr. Dean tried to tell you. A lot of people tried to tell you, but we could never break through the nonsense. Your men have turned into children. They're the weakest bunch of pansies you've ever seen. Every place I go, I'm embarrassed. Go to the churches. What the churches told you to eat caused your men to be sissies. They're weenies and sissies. I'm, the girls, look at the profiles of the men online dating. If you find a vegan man, there's butterflies, rainbows, pictures of cats, pictures of his mother. The girls have been through this. For Pete, look at your Facebook post. You have no testosterone. You have no hormones. You're weak men. We played tackle football. If we played, you guys played tackle, we'd have to have an ambulance out there because you guys wouldn't make it. We got hammered out there and we went home and did it again the next day. I sat to way too many seminars by Dr. Deal. All, I've had window people tell me how to do this. And if you have an accent and an expensive haircut and a blazer, you can talk them into anything. Right, Dr. Oz? You get shots for your kids, you need to get your kids shots. But when they ask him, well, I didn't get my kid shot, that's what you need to do to your kids. He didn't do it to his kid. He has an accent and a haircut. Keep an eye on that. I had to sit in this Dr. Hands guy for 20 years. If you eat saturated fat, you're going to die. If you use salt and saturated fat, you're going to die twice. If you use saturated fat, cholesterol, and salt, you will die three times. Now I'm sitting there in the back and everybody's worshiping him. Oh, he's a medical doctor, he's a cardiologist, he's the smartest guy in the room. Really? After 42 years in practice, it took this long to get a cartoon to explain it to you. We're gonna go to South Park and I'm gonna teach you how to eat from a cartoon because everything you told me was wrong. Roll it. It's dinner time on the East Coast in less than an hour. People are going to die. Sir, we've got a boy on the hotline who says he might know something. Who is this? My name isn't important. What matters is that the answer is in the pyramid. The pyramid? That's ancient stuff you're talking about. Are you sure? Bring up the pyramid. What, what is it? What is it for? We built the pyramid a long time ago to illustrate how much people should eat of the four basic food groups. Sir, we abandoned the pyramid when Michelle Obama got involved. The pyramid doesn't work. We've already tried it. It's upside down. What? Sir, the pyramid is upside down. Turn the pyramid upside down. You can't be serious. That would put butter and fat at the top Flip of the- Flip the damn food pyramid! This is not FDA approved! It's dinner time on the East Coast in 10 minutes. Now do it! That's Sir, we've got a match. Nutrition is stabilizing. We've got a well-balanced vaccine, sir. Get the president on the phone. Tell him to have some steak with his butter. Tell the president to have some steak with his butter. Do you realize what you've done to me with an upside-down pyramid my entire career? Show this to your friends, all you people doing health seminars at churches. You better take this clip because you turned your men into absolute spineless weenies. That makes testosterone. So the famous Dr. Brockenshire said, so many men and women depressed with no libido. 
you have to have fats and oils in your diet. People are starving. You can spot a vegetarian a mile away. Their skin is dry and scrapey. It's easy to be a vegetarian. You have to take, I'm going to give you a special way to approach this so you don't end up enfeebled like these men have. It's very easy to do. This is what it looks like when you're having oils in your diet. You don't look like John McCain. But these dry people are everywhere. That's the pyramid. Jeez, I feel better now. The stuff we've been through about that, what a crime scene. Now, how bad is it? Three countries, New Zealand, the UK, and Singapore, are begging you to have some meat and dairy. They can't afford the damaged kids because the plant-based diets aren't dense enough for pregnant women. I didn't say this. The country said this. The State Department said this. They understand they can't afford these health problems. The pyramid's upside down. It's always been backwards. You have to turn up to save what men you have left. These vegetarian men come in. Metro, Oakwood, Randy. They're veg they eat fruits and vegetables, and they're on Lipitor. And you know what? They look at me, Randy, my brain doesn't work. I have stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. I can remember all the stinking thinking people. Your brain needs fat, cholesterol, and protein. You're dying on the vine. The pyramid's upside down. But the countries are saying, look, we can't afford it. You're making yourself sick. Now, I'm going to get shot from somebody for saying this because all the people are so ingrained in this, it has become a cult. You can be a vegetarian, but you got to take some certain things because they're much more deficient than meat eaters, and they don't want to admit that, and they're going to argue with you. But there's the facts, there's the states, there's the literature, there's what happened. I don't want to hear about it. When Melissa's going through her dating profile, they like cats, they like butterflies, they like rain. These are the men, the rainbows, are looking for a special friend, for God's sakes. It's time to buck up. Let's get a little tougher up here because the women aren't going for these little, the real women. Now, there's a lot of happening people out there. Quest will run a test on you. At this age, I would absolutely be having some tests run if there's actually a sex panel. Because I, it's put, now, in, there's young people out It's quite a promiscuous world out there with things going on. You might want to look into this if there's anything that you're getting entangled with. Now, we're going to try to tighten up the men because all these squishy men, they're squishy. Every place I go, I got these kind of feminine squishy men. And I'm, the foreign invaders, have you seen them on TV? How many of them look squishy? Any squishy ones? They're pretty tough. They're walking up and down the streets here already. I see them with their backpacks. They made it up to Michigan. I hope you're tough enough to handle this because we're going to have a very interesting year. Simple. Everybody needs to support their body. I will guarantee any vegetarian two scoops, a splash, a couple of those, one, one, and one. I guarantee you, you'll feel better in 24 hours. 24 hours. One day, things might change. It's easy. How much does that cost? $3.97 per shake. It doesn't get any cheaper. It can, might make you happy. It might spark up your moods. It's a lot easier to work when your blood sugar is stable. Now, the rare earths that they found out in Wyoming are very important because this is a gigantic part of our health. You need rare earth minerals to make your body work. And, you know, I'm a sickly dude. I grew up, as many of you know, my dad had great insurance. He worked at Ford. I was at a salaried Blue Cross insurance, a John Cancock Blue Cross. So growing up, I was bottle fed. I never had breast milk. I was sick. I guess my mom said they used 50 different formulas. Before I had one, I would not throw up. But my allergies started. I had allergy shots. I had idiotic vaccines that I didn't need. I stopped at 12, never to go back. When I talk about these things, I actually went through quite a vaccinated world, and I wouldn't want to put anybody through that because I thankfully survived. But this is how important the body is. Breast milk when the baby's sick, 
breast milk when the baby is not. That's how much breast milk can change to raise antibodies for a sick baby. You tell me how, how this is not intelligently designed. It's a, I never had that when I got sick. That's what you're supposed to have when you're sick. Breast milk that adjusts to the baby's illness, not amoxicillin. You ruined the kids. They ruined me with that. Men, all you stinking, thinking men, you fragile men, you're everywhere. I see you everywhere because fats and oils aren't part of your diet. The average meat eater doesn't have the right fats and oils. This is what your body wants, saturated fat. This is not, you mix this up. I put a splash of that, a couple of those, a couple of those. I've done each one of those there separately. Mix up your oils. The kids can take that easy. This makes you smart. The people that have all the oils win all the spelling contests. Look where they live. Nobody from Nebraska wins a spelling contest. <laughs> they win, it's all the people that are on the coastlines. They used to get lots of healthy fats, but now there's so much mercury in it. They got mercury and fats, so they look healthy. Why do you think they're Napoleon? It's different. This is what would make the men protein, fat, and cholesterol. You might not have a kitten for a husband. One in 10 Americans do not get their recommended daily dose of fruits and vegetables. I can tell you I haven't had a decade dose of fruits and vegetables because it's not my thing. I never had that good of a diet. I never had good cooks around me. Now, to survive, I'm going to show you how I did it and show you how cheap and simple you can do it. In my life, I want you to take a good look at that combination. I have never, ever seen a, a mix of such density. I want density in my life. I'm going to show you how to do this. I don't want calories. I want density. If you, get, if you fill up the density holes, you're not that hungry, and you can stay in shape real, real easy, and I'll show you how to do this. This is my life. I, I'm going to show how cheap this can be and how simple this can be. Here's my protein, here's my greens, two scoops, one scoop, one scoop and a splash, morning and evening, a simple lunch. I can have a cheeseburger, I can have uh, uh, chicken and rice, I can have a turkey sandwich, and I'm full when I get to lunch because this is still in me. I eat to stay awake. It's easy. I'm going to show you how cheap this is in a minute. Now, I thought this was interesting because you've heard a lot of rumors about this. This guy had 35 broken bones, evil Knievel, his femur five times, his vertebrae three times, ankles. I want you to tell him he needs a vaccine to get through the winter. You know, you need a flu shot because you're not going to survive without a flu shot. You think he'd buy that? And remember, the hepatitis that was from transfusion. Humans glow. What do you think about the humans glowing? How disruptive do you think all this Wi-Fi is to this? I think it's got to be horrible. I think you're looking at half-dead people everywhere you go. We're an electrical being, and our electricity has been shorted out by everything. I am not this kind of person. I notice some places I sleep better than other places. Some places you bring up your Wi-Fi and you got 12 names next to it. It's like, all right, how much of this is around me? So I am not this kind of person. Me and my wife have been wearing these to see if we can make it easier to sleep, easier to live. My wife says her ears start to ring a little bit. She thinks, you know, it's possible that electricity is disturbing our system. So just something to think about. And remember to keep grounding sheets, grounding, keeping your shoes off. That's a huge topic that a lot of people are not taking advantage of. Now, something kind of interesting happened here with a patient. A lot of people saw this online. I'd like to talk a little bit about that. But first, what happens if our iPhone has more minerals in it than our bodies? We are, it's sadly, your iPhone has more minerals in it than your body. We need minerals in our body. Now, when everybody, when I was in school and they tried to tell me that I came from a monkey, well, the Big Bang thing, I want to show you what the Big Bang really looks like. This is what it looks like. Hmm. 
Now, <clears throat> this is a special story. Now, I got a call from a lady in Sault Ste. Marie. I Skyped with this patient. It's an interesting story about the office because I didn't want to see this child. She's a little, he's a little boy. I didn't want to see this kid. I didn't want to see this kid. I didn't want to see this kid. This lady wants, I don't want to see this kid. Why? Well, I'll show you why. Optic nerve coloboma. The optic nerve never made a connection from the brain to the eye. The left eye is legally blind, has nystagmus. Mom states hoping to strengthen eye muscles and improve vision. Wears glasses mostly for protection. Diagnosed via brain scan. He's been all over the country for his eyes. Both eyes were stuck, just like this, and he's blind. So I said to the girls, I can't, I can't help this kid. They said, she wants to see you. I said, look, I can't, I can't. The nerve isn't there. There's no nerve connecting her eye. This can't possibly work. I, I'm not a good pill salesman. Now, a lot of people out there are great pill salesmen. I got to try to fix something. Just using pills, I have no interest in that. I'm not selling this poor lady pills that are not going to help her son, but she pushed me. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Follow up to the eye story. Well, at 928, this child I Skyped with from Sault Ste. Marie, it's called an optic nerve coloboma. The optic nerve never made a connection from the brain of the eye. It's legally blind. His left eye is legally blind. Has the stagmas. The eyes were pointing all over the place. You saw it on the screen. So walking into the room, I really didn't want to walk into the room in all honesty because I don't like peddling pills if I can't get the job done. I didn't think I was going to be able to help this kid, but they insisted that I try. Well, he's three. If his brain never connected, my thinking is there's minerals that he had to be missing that caused the brain to connect. He's not missing fluoride. He's not missing Prozac. Your body runs on minerals and vitamins. I put him on the pregnancy protocol, the 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, three essential fats, 12 amino acids. I'm going to help finish this stuff that never happened is what I'm thinking. Now, since he's got his eyes, or his eyes were pointing all over the place, they never even looked straight at me. I put him on oculotrophin. It's a ground up raw cow eyeball. So the pregnancy protocol, a ground up eye, hoping if I supplied the things that he was missing that causes this to develop properly, could connect itself. So on one four, a couple days ago, I Skype, you saw, we'll replay the video. His eyes was moving all over his head. He was starting to get a little vision out of it. Everybody was getting kind of weepy over this. Ma's excited. The kid's brand new. Things are changing. This is what keeps me going with this incredible nutrition that's been ignored my entire career. They make fun of us doing this. He's been all over the world and some simple nutrition is causing his eye to start to find where it's supposed to be. It's time to rethink our entire health system because it's in a complete state of collapse and you just witnessed an incredible miracle that I thank God I was part of. This is his second visit. I put him on raw, raw eyeball and the 91 minerals from the pregnancy <coughs> protocol. Watch what's behind this door. I set the stage. Please tell me what happened from taking raw eyeball in 91 elements to start feeding your child because this is just incredible. Um, huge changes. I mean, like I said, we've been all over different specialists and everything trying to find something to help his vision and his eye is now tracking and looking in directions that it couldn't even look because it was always just turned in so far. So now I'm actually seeing movement in it. And I can't believe what this stuff has done in such a short period of time. It's really great. Royal Lee's a genius. Thank God I found standard process, but that's a story. His eye never attached from his brain, and he's starting to make it work. I have no clue what's happening. So I was taught a lesson because I really did not want to walk into this because 
I don't like to fail. I really like to succeed. I said, this is going to be nothing but a failure, but apparently it wasn't. So I cleaned, I was up north and I cleaned out a fireplace. The kids throw that away. Grandma used to put it on the garden so her kids' eyes worked and they had minerals for the kids when they were born. That's what they did. People don't understand. That was the fertilizer for the food from the future. It's the ashes from your fireplace. If you don't get enough minerals, this is a lady, this is one of my long-term patients. This is, I see this whole family. If you don't develop right, these are the arteries going up her neck. You talk about blockages. She's got my genetic blockage. She's got lipoprotein A. That didn't develop right. You have to have minerals to make these things. These arteries are all clogged up. She's had a stroke already. She's a young stroke person. There's no way blood can get through those torturous arteries. And you chiropractors got to be on your toes because those are everywhere. And you got to be on your toes because they can have real neurologic symptoms from turning their neck back and forth, and we caught that. I'm sharing that with you because that's what her MRI looked like. Now, nerve fibers, they say they have 850,000 kilometers of nerve fibers in a human. That's a long ways. Now, in my life, two things, I believe, helped me to achieve 42 years of practice with three sick days and 30 five, 40 years of hockey, seriously, was two things. I'm all over, I have 66,000 miles of blood vessels in my body. I have horrible heart disease in my family. I've kept my arteries ridiculously open for 30 years now. I'm all over my circulation. I eat restaurant food and I have a zero plaque score per Cindy. Now circulation's one, and the other thing, closer to 70 than 60, I've been able to maintain speed of my adjusting because of a couple things. I've kept my nerve fibers healthy. How do you keep your nerves healthy? I'm gonna ask a quiz right now to all the doctors and nurses and health specialists and health counselors. How do you make your nerves healthy? Fats and oils, fats and oils. You've starved your men to death. Now, my B vitamins, are the core of my nerves and the oils are the coatings. So making sure that my sugar consumption, which has been crazy, is controlled, I've kept my nerves crisp and my circulation open. Those two things are huge. Everybody's, the medication sucked the life out of your nerves, the low fat diet smoked you, and that's why you look old at 40. Nerves and circulation run the show and I've been all over that hard for me because I know that. There's the bag I carry around. I grind up my stuff and I put it in my shake. I do two shakes a day. There's my beta food, there's my oils, there's my heart stuff, there's my calcium. I take my health seriously because I know what the alternative is. They smoke my patients. It ain't the same as it used to be. I grind up my pills, stick it in the shake, and I swallow it. I do two shakes a day. And I'm going to show you how to save a fortune in health today because I'm going to show you what I spend in health a day, how simple this actually is. There. This morning, I walked in this office, two scoops, a splash, one scoop, one scoop. That was my breakfast. I'm wide awake. I will not yawn during the day. I can eat junk on top of that. I lost 30 pounds doing this over the course of a year. I did this in front of you without any of you noticing. You just noticed I started to get smaller in front of you. It was easy. I didn't starve myself. $6.26 per shake. A Big Mac is 13 bucks. The, you know, Bill Gates' French fries, that's a whole nother story. I can thrive off that. I don't need to, I can have a turkey sandwich at lunch. That's $6.26. Two of those is how much? $13, $12.50. Yesterday, I had a turkey sandwich at Picasso's. I had half the sandwich, half a bag of chips, this much of a root beer, and I'm back at work. I'm wide awake before I go home. Two scoops, one scoop, one scoop, and a splash, because if I go home and don't do this, I'm going to eat junk. Then I'm going to start eating all kinds of junk, and I'm gonna, it's going to disturb my sleep. It's going to make me wake up too much. I, I don't have the willpower. I have to control this. 
So when I go home, I can eat whatever I want, but it's going to cut it in half, if not 80%. So a $12, $14 lunch, maybe, $6.26 twice, and I eat $5 of junk when I go home, I can thrive like this for about $28, $29 a day. You can't possibly eat this good. I don't care if you want to... If you had Bill Gates' money on Epstein's Island with a kid chasing you, you couldn't possibly eat this good. It's impossible. So that's how simple it is. It does not have to be expensive. This costs nothing. I spend nothing in grocery stores. I spend nothing in restaurants. I'm not hungry because I'm full. Everywhere I go, I'm satisfied. I can pick at what I want to eat, but I don't have to eat because I have a very dense diet. That's why I can stay in shape. People are full of calories with nothing in it. You want density without the calories. It's very simple to live like this. 42 years with three sick days, and people have told me I've been doing it wrong my entire career. The low-fat people. Now, every time I do stuff like this, I end up getting in trouble, but I'm going to do something special. Now look, I didn't plan this. Every time I do something like this, without planning it to the staff, and I didn't screen it to, I'm going to be in trouble just like you know who. I'm going to throw the MCT in for free if you order this till May 1st. The George Bush story is fresh in your minds, I think, right now. So, there's your deal. I can't do this, but I'm going to do this. I'm throwing that in. See what it's like to get healthy, saving a fortune. This was yesterday. The largest 100 million vaccinated people, the global COVID vaccine safety, there it is. This hit the world yesterday. They're trying to smoke you, and your church tried to smoke you, your hospital tried to smoke you, your doctor tried to smoke you, your cardiologist, everybody tried to smoke you. There is the official statistics. Heart disease, cancer, brain cancer, blood clots. It's a global catastrophe. And the medical community, and you people that had churches that have hospital networks, the Catholics, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Adventists, the Lutherans, you guys totally succumbed to the government control because the government gave you more money than your parishioners paid in tithe. So you didn't write exemptions for your People, you forced them to get shot. You did not run to their safety when they needed you more than ever. The church has collapsed under this, and I'm ashamed of you. After all the health seminars, after all the stuff I had to listen to, the first thing, my weak men ran for the hills and ran for a shot with a mask on. It was embarrassing. Ready? This is where we're at. Now, this is going to be kind of tough today, so put your big boy pants on because we're going for it. What's in the horse pill? It's just medicine. It's good for you. Yeah, but I don't like the idea of taking something if I don't know what it is. Don't get upset, Mr. McMurphy. I'm not getting upset, Miss Bilbo. It's just that I don't want anyone to try and slip me so Peter. You know what I mean? Murphy doesn't want to take his medication orally. I'm sure we can arrange that he can have it some other way. But I don't think you'd like it, Mr. McMurphy. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this a long time. You have no clue. You saw your cartoon. Send us to the health team, please. They need to, before we lose any more men, before they get any weaker, this is not a time for weak men. They've made the men weak, very weak. You can see it everywhere you go. The women are tougher than the men. Now, you ready? This is going to be tough. You know, there was a time when having a nurse in a household used to be a benefit. In my career, it's not true anymore. What I just witnessed in the last four years, you give me that passive man, you give me that low-fat man, and that nurse wife, trained by Pfizer, trained by Moderna, Every day of their life, 
give them chemicals, give them poisons. You really bought the program, didn't you? Everywhere I went, you people were the tip of the spear. You bullied the patients, you bullied your husbands, you bullied your kids, you bullied everybody. You separated families. This was a total hoax and fraud, the whole thing. This is a complete, absolute scam. Everybody knows it. The turbo cancers are everywhere. Everybody knows. I've watched them drop dead everywhere. Everywhere. Everybody's got a story. The relatives, medical. What if you have, in my family, one of the relatives went to medical school and in the COVID thing. Now, I had to sit, sit and listen to her, and everybody said, you know, she's a lovely little girl. You know, she's starting medical school. I said, this will be the biggest nightmare that ever happened. So at the family get-together, I had to sit her with watch with a mask on, showing us how Dr. Fauci knows what he's talking about, and she's showing CDC statistics to us at the family and how important and why we're nuts and we need to listen. That's what medical school and dental school has done to your kids, is brainwash them to believe total nonsense, and you just witnessed a global attack on humanity by the medical profession. And they still can't handle it, they did it. The churches, I got churches downriver. I got plumbers, drywallers, contractors looking at the medical cartel in the corner, got their masks on, their little stickers from their shots shaking, Normal people look at you like, what happened to you? They're ashamed of how scared you are after you told them to eat healthy for decades. Then the moment something happened, you folded up like a deck of cards, ran in the corner with a bag over your head. After a health message to the world? How embarrassing. You split up families, nursing homes, people died alone. 8,061 people died alone. Wait till you're on that last day dying alone. You nurses helped contribute to this. You're sick, you lost your lives, you got diseases, you're all over the internet. It's time to stand up. Walk out of the hospital if you have to. This is not worth a job. I can't believe what's going on. Families are destroyed, never to return to where they used to be because you drove a wedge down everything and you stuck up for something that made absolutely no sense. Daycares were ruined. Kids have been turned into absolute withering weenies. I'm ashamed at what these little kids, they're afraid. This wouldn't even attack the kids. The kids had nothing to do with the flu. The whole thing was a hoax. Sports were turned into death camps. They're dropping dead everywhere. Toby Keith took the shot. The American hero, he got sprung. They're going down everywhere. This ain't gonna stop. This is building. This isn't over. It's ramping up. Neighbors and relatives were turned against each other, never to return. The hospital, hospitals are giving you injections when you're out. One, suicide clinics won't, assisted suicide clinics make you get vaccinated so they can kill you. Just give them the shot and wait. You don't have to do it all, just save money. Look around the room, folks. All you nurses got a lot of apologizing to do. Your friends, your relatives, you made fools of yourself all of you, it's embarrassing. Look at your hands. You've washed the germs off your hands so your hands look like dog. They look like they've been rubbed with a absolute Brillo pad. Hands look normal if you have fats and oils and you don't wash yourself to death. Having normal bacteria and germs on your hand is normal. You don't have sterile hands. It's ridiculous. For the sake of mercy, I'm stopping at 17 things. Interesting number, that 17. But I hope all the people in the room that were affected by some of those idiotic decisions, like the ones dancing with dead bodies on your shoulders, oh, that was real. That really added a little flavor. I could see the compassion that you had for us all. It's time to stand up. It's gone on long enough. And to see what's happened to the medical community, you've lost. People are calling all the time here saying, I've lost total faith in the medical community. I'm never going back. They tried to kill me. You're losing it, folks. You're losing what you had. Now we all have to buy insurance, and when you get to the doctor, they don't even accept the insurance that you had to buy in the first place. What a mess. 
This is how crazy it can be. You're going to learn some stuff now. Doc, this is a big one. Here's a lady. She's a, she works in health in the city that I live in. She's pretty well known. This was a favor. I had, special, I had to see this special lady, so she came in. She's very frustrated. I'm 41 years old. She teaches health stuff. We're back to the health people. She teaches health stuff. They found a lump, second mammogram, biopsy, stage zero with no lymph nodes. So she got this, it's this month. She's getting a huge, she's getting it chopped off. They're going through the big procedure, and she walked in. I looked at her. I said, all right. She said, you don't understand. I've lived a really healthy life. I don't know how this happened to me. I eat right, I exercise, I do everything well. Look in her eye, she's an anxious little gal and she was not happy. She said, I tried so hard not to be here. I said, look at your file. We're gonna have fun today. Look at your file, it's right there. She said, what? I said, you have an estrogen positive cancer, didn't you? And she got the COVID vaccine, which sped it up real quickly. So a slow COVID vaccine grew like crazy pretty much overnight. And they said the cancer is estrogen receptive positive. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Been to an oncologist, been to the gynecologist, been to her internist. They've been, then she has to come to a chiropractor. How embarrassing. A chiropractor? Come on, those guys are quacks. Why would you bother with that? They can't help people. Their eyes don't work. It would never work, would it? So she has to come to me. I said, look at your file. It's right there. Didn't anybody say this to you? What? She has a marine, a can, an estrogen-soaked Marina birth control IUD. It was an, I said, you got estrogen implanted in your uterus, leaking for 11 straight years. She just looked at me. You mean to tell me? I said, I'd have had that thing out with a pair of pliers yesterday. She's like, you got to be kidding. I said, yes. You've got estrogen in your body. She said, I, why didn't they say this? I said, I don't know. Maybe they're worried about a COVID vaccine and not really worried about what's wrong with you. Her second visit, that thing's already out. Her husband's been, <clears throat> and that is how crazy it is. She said, this is embarrassing. Anybody should have picked this up. She's very well known. She's got a big mouth, and this, she's going to talk about this. This is how you build a practice. This will never stop this story. Now, I'm going to bring up a patient from the past. Sharon's a housewife. I got Sharon after breast cancer, after chemo, radiation, after same kind of cancer. Here's her story. This is embarrassing. It's amazing when the patients are smarter than the doctors. Sharon just said something that's so incredibly brilliant. Could you please, she had a hormone response of cancer. She came into DHS after. We're helping her with a lot of nutritional things. They've had great results here. Yeah. <clears throat> now, listen to the question. She had a hormone response of cancer and she's taking a bunch of pills for her hormones. Please go on with the conversation that you had with the doctor. I asked my doctors why they weren't monitoring my hormones and none of them had an answer to that. They said they've never had it, that anybody asked that question before. <laughs> if you can even figure this out, at DHS, Quest Labs asked us to set up a phlebotomy lab. So today, after all that she's been through, we're going to check her hormones that the doctors have no clue what to check after having breast cancer from hormones and having nobody say, folks, you got to start asking some simple questions because they're running right over you like they just ran over her. And she asked a question that they couldn't even answer that simple question. DHS rocks. Go get your blood tested. Let's find out what's really wrong with you. She's a housewife steering her oncologist after the fact. You don't have a chance. You just don't have a chance. You ready? And I got something to tell you folks, because this has been completely, you know, the left, you know, the limp terms. Testosterone does not make men angry. Testosterone makes men calm. Low testosterone makes men angry. The men that you see acting up in the streets, on, those are practically close to women. 
no offense to the women, but these are guys with no testosterone. Testosterone does not men, if you take artificial testosterone, you get yourself all screwed up, but normal male testosterone makes men calm, relaxed, and happy. It does not make them angry. That is ridiculous what they did. And you don't know how many, I, again, well, Kayla today, you don't know how many women are looking for a man in their 20s and 30s. There's none left. You guys have absolutely deballed yourself in front of all these women. It's time to suck it up, start thinking about what it's like, because what's coming down the pike is not going to be easy, and weak men make for very difficult times. Now, this is, now, what amount of decay are you willing to accept? Now, when I go out in my private life, I can't believe the decay that I see in humanity. And they seem perfectly content with it. What disturbs me and some of you doctors, there's a whole lot of people out there that are never going to pursue anything they've given up. I think 35% of the people out there, look at them. Look how they dress. Look what they look like. They've actually given up. They're never going to pursue this, ever. They can't afford it. They're not interested in this. And they're completely mentally defective enough they don't even get where they're at right now. Now, being strong enough to work for 42 years, my, the integrity of my health allowed me, with the good Lord's blessing, of course, to last this long. The next generation is going to fall apart on this food. If you die, you're getting away with it. But if you get sick, there's no place to go. I'm terrified at the nursing homes, assisted living in the hospitals. I've had to redouble my health because I'm not going there because I watched what they just did. Now, here's a patient in that period of time lost her hips. Now, look at that. 11, 7, that's not that. Look at the space. Look at the space. <clears throat> she's a single woman. She's lost both hips. She's retired. She's terrified. She needs both hips replaced, and she's terrified. <clears throat> now, I want to show you me. Now, that's a $70,000 operation. Now, here's my hips. I'm losing both hips. It's in my family. There's 8-3-2016. Now, here's that many years later. Now, you can't see this well, but about 30 years ago, man, I got taken down on a breakaway hardcore. Oh, man, I got pulled out. I went down on my left hip hard. Oh, man, it was tough. Now, there's holes in my hip here. There's nothing here. Now, this is necrotic bone. There's a, you can see that little hole where it's dead. I have avascular necrosis of my left hip socket, which kind of sucks. I've been able to keep this spot healthy. I'm kind of rubbing on the insides here, but... Okay, would you spend two or three thousand dollars in your hips? I couldn't even feel much of that what I was taking. So my 70 grand. Now, Suzanne was in today, one of my patients. She's all scheduled for hip replacement. And they called her and said, well, sorry, we don't take your insurance. She was turned down at three spots. So once, by the time you need it, she said, I got great insurance. And they don't, she works, like she has a great job. Everybody's getting sick of the insurance game. You better take care of yourself. After buying insurance, they're going to tell you, we don't accept your insurance. It's everywhere. I spend a fortune to slow that down. Would you rather spend two or three grand over that time just on that? That's my hockey shake. Hold your frame together because you can't afford to break. There's a low level of that. There's your bone, collagen, simple. Two, two, a splash, a splash. This is what it's like to keep your frame strong. How many men closer to 70 than 60 stand like this? Go through the mall. This is, everybody walks in. They can't walk. They can't stand. They can hardly hold themselves up. Minerals hold my frame up. You're watching a group of people that are starving to death. There's nothing in the food. Meat eaters, vegetarians, there's nothing in the food. You better start su supplementing yourself because there's no place to go when you're sick. <clears throat> Bone support. I've had, all right, in the last three weeks, we've had a couple broken backs, a couple, a broken leg, a broken wrist, a broken hand, a, everything. Broken leg, amazing. How many, there's nothing in the food. This is what, these are big caplets, powder pills. Tighten up your bones. I take one look at these men's x-rays. I did it again today. All right, how much coffee do you drink? How much coffee? How much tea do you drink? They mumble when I ask that question. I said, you drank your bones away. Your bones are gone. 
I can't believe one year I had 10 people or five people break their backs in about three months, just slipping and falling. And these were big, strong guys. There's nothing in the food again. This is kind of irritating. I did business with this dude. He can probably figure out what this is most of my life. I started with him in my teens. I said, look, if you're going to do this job, you better keep your detox pathways open because it's going to get you. One way or the other, it's going to get you. So as typical cheap white guy, I grew up with one. It was called, my dad was Ray Tent. He basically told me, I can't afford to do this. Making six figures a year, six figures a year. His father dies and leaves him a ton of money that he didn't know he had. So now he's rich. He's in his 70s. And this is what he looks like. Oh, congratulations. You saved your money. You got a million bucks in the bank and you look like hell. So what is your retirement going to look like? This is a guy I know well. I warned him your job is going to get you. And his job, if he'd have done that, he might have not, he'd been, been catching fish a lot easier in his retirement. This, keep your detox pathways open. You have, these are, these are not, these, these are, do not, a couple of these, one or the other, do not. I keep my chlorophyll pearls up because it makes me look like I'm healthy. You got to, if you want to look the part, you got to get healthy things. Now, this is special. It pays to be a patient of Dr. Tents because you doctors watching this, I'm only showing you about half of what goes on here. I can't show you most of it because this is public. This is live. I can't show you most of the office because they don't want you well. They really don't want you well anymore. They want us sick. So one of my special patients, one of my son's friends, significant others, broke her back. They're in the hospital. So me and my wife, I went to downtown Flint. I grabbed my 45 and off I went. You know why I grabbed my 45 to go to Flint? Because they don't make a 46, that's why. And so I grabbed my 45, off we went to Flint, and I went to see this. She broke her back. She was sitting. That disc was blown right into the spinal cord. I walked in. She was just a sweet little gal. We walked in. I, I, had, I took some stuff with me. I walked into the filthiest, most disgusting hospital I have ever been in in my life. I could not believe the floor in that room. It was disgusting. The people were filthy. The place was filthy. The room was filthy. They don't have a chance there. Here she sits in a C shape in a chair. She's got a broken back sitting like this. The pain pills had locked up her bowels. This is day four, sitting there. I said, I got a great idea. Let's put a pillow behind her back. Oh my gosh, thank you. How about a laxative so she can take a dump? She hasn't pooped in four days. Did anybody think, oh, nobody asked for that. Well, if she tries to poop with that disc next to the spinal cord, you're going to hear her scream four floors over because it's laying against the cord. I put her, I took special stuff. We got her out of there in five days. This is right now. You know where she's at right now? I told the staff. She's in a motor home laying on her back healing in Daytona and the race was rained out. I got her. She said, do you think I can go? I had, when I saw her walk, she got up. That, she had motor. Her left leg would not work. That it was laying right on her leg. And I got her walking. She got up in that motor home. She said, I'm getting out of this place. The floor was disgusting. You do not want to go in the hospital today, especially in the inner city. The people, unbelievable. What an education. So she's a special person. It pays to be a patient here because I will do, there's a lot of stories I can't tell you because when things go south, we're there for you, but when you call us when things go south and we don't know you, we don't know you that well. 
you better have a relationship here when things go south because if you don't, they might go south. <clears throat> I have no teeth. These are all implants because they ruined my mouth because I had great insurance as a kid. Protect your teeth unless you got a couple hundred grand to spend on your mouth because I've been there. You don't want to go there. <clears throat> Surgery protocol. Get yourself prepared. I did those two for my hernia surgery, and they were very impressed. If you had, you know, bone replacement, a lot of ways to prepare for surgery. <clears throat> Excuse me. For my veteran patients, this is not for the new people. For my veteran patients that like to do stuff, look, biofilm is that slippery stuff in our body. If you put your finger in a water bottle, it's not washed and it's slippery. That's biofilm. All the wipes, all the hand sanitizer, all the nonsense they talk you into doing. I am not a hand washer. I am not a hand fanatic. These are healthy looking hands. They're actually part of my body still. They look like they belong to me. When your hands look like they've been through an oven and they've been scraped with a Brillo pad, oh, I've washed them a million times. Your hands look like they're dead. This is life that's dead. The germ thing stuck in their head till it ruined their brain. That's 1850s Louis Pasteur stuff. It's old fashioned. You tried it, it didn't work, you lost. Kids that played in the dirt in PubMed did not get leukemia. It's in the literature. If you play in the dirt, there's bacteria that kids have to have that keeps them healthy. Your kids have never seen the dirt because you got that little Purell thing. You've washed them from head to toe, and that's where they're sick all the time. Get them in the dirt. But if you want to get something deep in your body, Get a bottle of di bio, uh, that biofilm, take four three times a day, and see what you can uncover that's hidden. So these are the things hidden in your body. I enjoy playing that periodically just to see. I'm always uncovering stuff because I'm not that far from the death zone. What's the Bible say? <clears throat> three score and ten. If you're lucky, you get an extra ten. As you get closer to this point in your life, you better put a little more effort into it if you don't want to go into these one of these long, drawn-out deals that takes you forever to die. <clears throat> the viruses in your nose, we have played, after just getting viruses put in your body artificially, let's talk about viruses. Viruses in your nose, and everybody picks their nose, even you women pick your nose, and I know you don't pick your nose, but you do, we just ain't catching you. Everybody picks their nose, viruses go right from your nose to your brain. Viruses are crazy things that most people have no clue how to treat, but they act like they do. Look at this sheet. This is crazy. Look at that. Viruses, Alzheimer's, ALS, generalized dementia, simple encephalitis, Epstein-Barr. You know how many MS patients have Epstein-Barr? Most of them. Herpes. The viruses were in the vaccines. All right. You ready? You ready? This is special. I'm going to teach the doctors this one. All right. It's important. <clears throat> it's important. Get 22 year old in with her mom. She, once a week for the last 10 years, what she says she experiences sensitivity, sounds, and lights, nausea, and vomiting, pain in the forehead, and she throws up. Once a week, a horrible headache vomiting, sends it to can't see the light for, t for 10 straight years. She's 22. She's been like this since she was 12. So I'm looking at this mom. I said, you did something to your kid. She said, no, I didn't. I said, something happened with this kid. This isn't normal. Kids don't do this. I said, your kid got sick from something. She said, I said, you have all the symptoms. When this is an attack, you go to the hospital with this, they're going to think you got meningitis. They're going to do a spinal tap. I said, your kid isn't a mess. Something happened to your kid. She said, no, it didn't. I didn't know it. I said, something happened to your kid. I said, this isn't, kids don't do this. She said, no, really, I would know if something happened. So I get all done, and Carly says, she, she's got to get something off her chest. I said, all right, what is it? She said, all right. Ten years ago, a kid died in her class of bacterial meningitis. I went and got her one meningitis shot. She's had these headaches ever since. Boom. <laughs> that. I said, there you have, you, the kid died of bacterial meningitis, which is about a two-day thing, 
you got a virus running through your head. Her second visit, her headaches had stopped. Now for you guys, she's gonna have to take those pills the rest of her life. She turned a virus loose in her brain. It's already stopped, but from my standpoint, she's gonna have to, she found out how to treat it. I can control that forever at a very low dose and she stopped taking her pills because she had a virus induced into her body through an abnormal channel. How do you get sick? Through your nose and through your mouth. Forget the bloodstream, that's what got you all sick. She's doing fantastic. And I'm just about done here. I've had it, this is a police officer from Redford. He can't feel his arms and legs, three pulmonary embolisms. This was the most broke down man. He's 53. Look at this. Diazide, statins, omeprazole, Jardian, Ozempic, Atenanol, he's ruined. And he had no clue, his vitamin, never heard of vitamin D. A black man that's a cop. This is, a, this is what happens. If you got good insurance, you work for the state, you work for the big three, and they think they got a deal because somebody else, I felt so bad for this guy. The statins and the amepra, he can't even feel his arms and legs. They've sucked all the fat out of his body. He's here for the side effects of the drugs. 53, embarrassing. The better your insurance, the more you look like this. Poor people never look like this. They can't afford to get this sick. What a mess. Now, I got a lot of people right now concerned about what's happening. Okay? I'm going to make it real, real simple for you. Real simple. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. I'm going to make it simple. I think it's real easy to tell what's going on in the country right now. I, when I see the guys in front of President Biden, the Secret Service people, it reminds me of going to the Elks Club for a fish fry with my father. The suit doesn't fit. They don't fit. Nothing fits. It looks like a clown show. Every time I see this guy, they look like they could kill you with a paper clip in their sleep. And they, they're serious. They're carrying a suitcase that's got everything in it. This guy, this looks like a clown show. From the bottom of my heart, I honestly believe you're watching a gigantic operation at play right now. They're disrupting the world. They're terrified of this guy. Watch the Secret Service people if you want to know what's going on. We are going to have a heck of a year. You better stay well because the hospital is waiting for you with open arms and a casket. I had a CEO of a hospital that I will let remain anonymous. I sat over a potluck at him. He looked me in the eye and said, if we get them, we get 200 grand. If we save them, it's five grand. You do the math. He said that to me across the table at a church potluck. Unbelievable. <laughs> and the church has supported this. All right, I have one last little gift for you guys. A lot of people that have been watching me forever, I have had some very interesting experiences in my life. Here's one for you. <clears throat> Look up a cloud buster. This is pretty cool. Now, when I was doing all the energy stuff as a teenager, studying the Hieronymus machine, all the energy stuff, this came across my field and <clears throat> looked up cloud busters. You'll have some fun. It's some really interesting energy stuff that you'll enjoy. Now, we're going to have a contest. Okay, we're going to have a contest. It's $500 in supplements. We had a contest, guess my vitamin D, and some lady won. She guessed it. I was 45. I thought it was going to be higher. I baked in the summer, and I only got it to 45 without supplements, which means I got to take it even in the summer. <clears throat> but we have a new contest. Now that many of you are awake, and a lot of people have been woken up from DHS, and you're not like you used to be, I want to know... What's the dumbest thing that you used to believe in that you don't anymore? Now, we're going to have a contest. The girls are going to be the judge because I'm too jaded on this. I'm going to give you a suggestion. I did a lecture called The Ultimate Lie, Find Your Way Home. I asked, what's the biggest lie you've ever been told? If you want to know what that is, you can't use that one because I did a lecture on that. Second, my second favorite one that you can't use. This is my favorite thing lately. 
You ready? This would be a winner. We've lost the technology to get back to the moon. <laughs> We've, lost the tech We've lost the technology to get back to the moon. Can you actually believe they expect us to believe this? A record collection is in something this big, and they've lost the technology to get back to the moon. So, the contest ends May 1st. When you place an order, what was the dumbest thing you used to believe in that no longer you believe in? The girls are going to judge $500 to the winner of supplements. I think this will be funny to see what they come up with. Now, folks, today they're trying to crush businesses. They're trying to crush places, everything. Try to support local. You guys seeing doctors, support your doctors that are local. Support the people that are giving you information. Support DHS. You better support the little guy because there's not going to be any little guys left. You don't want to deal with the big guys. Hopefully, this has been a little more eye-opening for you. I taught, about a lot of, taught you about a lot of new things, a new way of thinking. Take a good look at that clip. If you got to learn from a cartoon, share the cartoon with your friends because I think you might have to teach them. That, their brain might be able to handle a simple cartoon because all the literature that steered them off the plate didn't work. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all you guys. Remember, Dr. Gill, Dr. Jeff, Dr. Me, you can move around if you want to schedule a new patient with somebody else. Support DHS and we will support you. Stay well.